Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode in the World Partition uh, series. I'm going to try and cover this in just a couple episodes. We're going to go over an intro to how to set up World Partition and kind of how it works. We're going to go into the alternative uh, data layers and how they work. And then finally we'll move into uh, some advanced practices where you combine the two together in order to get a streamlined loading in and out of actors within your world. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start off here, um, I have the third person uh, map currently open. This is just the default map the engine uh, starts you off with. And then now this map for Unreal Engine 5.3, I believe it comes with World Partition enabled. Um, so first, I'm just going to show you how, how to set up a new map or new level. Because um, I'm assuming that's probably the first thing you're going to do, typically, in a game. So let's go ahead and just pick level. I'm just going to put it in here next to the other one. Let's name it World Comp Tutorial. Now, once we have this saved, created, this is just a blank world at this point. The first thing we're going to do is add partitioned streaming support. Now, this is a new world, so adding partitioned streaming support in is really easy. If you want to convert a level that is already... If it's not set up for world partition, but you already have a bunch of stuff in the world... Um, and you need to get it transferred over to World Partition so you can start working on it that way. Uh, there is a fairly straightforward way to do it. First thing you're going to do is go to content right here on this left side of your content browser. Right click, and then you're going to hit resave all. This can sometimes take a couple of minutes. Let me test it out here. Yep, it kind of froze right there. Uh, I may go ahead and just skip to the end here, and I'll let you know how many how many minutes it takes. Okay, so that finished. It had one uh, error. Not really, though. I'm just going to ignore that. Um, so that took about eight minutes, start to finish. So just when you're uh, doing it, I would probably start it and then just go make yourself like a cup of coffee or something. Uh, from there, we'll go to Tools, and down to Convert Level to a World Partition. You hit that, it opens up this, then you need to find a level that has not been converted yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure I already converted this one, I think just a second ago. Let me double check. Yeah, it's already converted. Anyways, you would convert it over to... you convert a level over to World Partition. Uh, I'll do Showcase. Just this here. Level, add partitioned, add partitioned. Okay, yes, both of those are good. I'll just do showcase. Uh, I believe convert is, uh, yeah, it looks like it's creating a new map versus overwriting the current one. So in this instance, I don't want to overwrite this one. Um, so it should instead make a copy of this map with world partition. Uh, the rest of the stuff you can just leave blank. You'll go. 
And then I'll go ahead and let you know. I mean, the editor does crash sometimes when this is happening. Um, depending on the size of the map, this can be a pretty large, a pretty large thing for it to deal with. Um, so, and it's also time consuming. And it's more time consuming the larger the map is. So once again, I'm probably going to skip over this and then just let you know how long it actually takes. Oh, okay, actually, that wasn't too bad. It looks like this map isn't too big. Uh, so it's been converted to World Partition now. It automatically opened it up and it created these extra uh, HLED later, uh, layers for it. Let's go ahead and load the region. Yeah, okay. So yeah, as you can see, that works. Um, and it lets you keep the original file, which is why I recommend doing it that way. That way, if something goes wrong <clears throat> during the actual process, um, you get to keep the original map. Or if the new map shows up and you don't like the way it looks, you have the original um, in order to try and either try again or you can try to fix something, update it. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get off this. So back to here, um, in the world uh, comp tutorial, once you've got it added over to, uh, like I showed you before, where you make the new map, and then you just hit add partition streaming support, um, on a blank map, that should work just fine. And then from there on, anything else you added in will just, it'll just work. Um, delete that. I'm going to go ahead and go back over to the third person map to pick up from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and go ahead and load all this. Okay. Liner. Okay. So to start with, we're going to go over the, well, let's see. That was kind of the basic setup for World Partition. Um, if you've never used it before, a couple of windows you're going to want. Uh, not really layers. I would go ahead and add the data layers window. You can just go here and it should be... Gosh. Yeah, here it is. World Partition, Data Layers, and then you've got the World Partition Editor. So this is Data Layers, this is the World Partition. Um, I typically just add them on here. Data Layers next to the Outliner, World Partition next to like the World Settings. And then in World Settings, you're going to want to just search up probably Partition. and it'll give you the world partition setup. You're gonna to want to enable streaming. This is usually um, disabled by default. Um, as the world partition system, I believe works without this enabled, but it, it just handles everything on a very basic level and you don't really want that. Once you've got this enabled, you can go down here, you'll have settings like the runtime uh, preview grid. You can do that and it shows you the loading in and out grid. And then you've got your grids down here. Usually you're going to start with one grid. It's going to be called main grid. It'll have a larger cell size and loading range. And then you can also create additional grids with this button. And then you can assign colors to them as well to help you look at them kind of visually. And then each grid, you can name it. This is important. Um, you can name it whatever you want. Right now I just have main and then large actor and then the new one, which is none. You've got the cell size, the loading range, and then this is the block on slow streaming. Usually I'm just going to leave this disabled. If you do everything right, 
you shouldn't need to mess with that too much, but you can sometimes enable it for some of your smaller grids that are like loading in uh, tiny objects close or on your grids that are loading in uh, maybe like larger actors that are really far away um, that the player doesn't necessarily need to see immediately. Um, things like that. You can enable this for like low priority, uh, low priority stuff. This I believe is a Z calling. I haven't played around with this, but I believe the way the world partition grid works is just on an X Y basis. Um, so it doesn't really count Z distance. But I believe if you do this, then instead of it just being like a circle on the ground, it also creates that same circle up and down and it will unload things that are too far down or too far up most if you use this i feel like that's really situational um for most like open world games you probably wouldn't use this but it's just something to keep in mind maybe if you have like cave systems or something that go far enough underground you don't want them to load when you're above ground um because it would affect performance but yeah and then, so we got main grid, large actor grid. Basically how these work is I've got the main grid. And in, I'm actually, I'm just going to remove this preview grid real quick because it's annoying. Um, on your actor, so this is just the static mesh for the cube. And then I've also got these two walls here, which are just a copy and paste of this. If you go down into the details panel, if you go to streaming and go down, you've got world partition, runtime grid, and then is spatially loaded. Now, is spatially loaded means that this relies on the base world partition system to load in and out. And then the runtime grid is the actual name that we picked. So this. So if you want objects to only load in or out based off of a specific grid, you would take this name and copy and paste it right here. So I'll go ahead and just do that large actor grid. And then I'm spatially loaded. And then if you look at these, I've got a couple of these farther ones. They are all set up, spatially loaded, and under the large actor grid. So this bigger one is going off of this grid, and all of these ones are going to go off this grid. So to see what that kind of looks like. Okay, it did crash. I got it back up. All right, so we should be good and see here okay i think it's actually because i made a new grid name i mean i made a new grid and i didn't name it i'm gonna go ahead and just delete the new grid okay yep that was it yeah so if you make a new grid don't forget to name it um none is the default uh name and i guess if you leave it as that the game just crashes so Let's see here. Yes. Okay. And then these, these are set to the large actor grid. So it loads in and out the same as everything else. Now, if I take it and I change it over to the main grid, which is a much smaller range. Save. You can see it's gone. You can see all the others back there, though, but that one is gone. Now, if we cover enough distance here, it should pop back in. Yep, there it is. And if you'll notice, the other stuff, a lot of the other stuff over there is also on the main grid, and it disappeared while we were moving. So, that's basically how the grid, that's a basic understanding of how the grid partition system works. You can split objects up to different grids. And then it will remove them or load them in separately based off of their distance to the player. 
So you can set up large objects to be on a very large grid. You can take much smaller objects and set them up to be on a much closer range grid. Like for instance, these gold bars are on the main grid. And as I back away, get a little bit farther. Yeah. As you look, you can see they're gone now. If I get a little bit closer, they kind of load back in. Yeah. And they're kind of hard to see, but they are loading and unloading right about there. Somewhere in there. Now this, I set some of these up to a data layer, so these gold bars may never disappear. Yeah, they're just floating there. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that on a future video. The only reason you would want to do that is for stuff inside of like an office. Or if you wanted to... No, that's, that's basically it. Anything that would be inside of another building where no matter how close you were, you wouldn't be able to see them until you either entered the building or with, got within like a certain range and saw them through a window. Um, that's the only time you would want those to show up. Like you wouldn't want to load the inside of an entire warehouse until the player is actually going to go into the warehouse itself. So... All right, I think I'll go ahead and end this video here. It's kind of a basic partition system setup. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it.